Welcome, I'm David Nurse, MBA shooting coach turned life optimization coach, speaker, author, leader of all types. On this show, we bring on high performers, athletes, CEOs, entrepreneurs, people doing amazing things in this world, but they weren't always at that spot. And we talk about how they got through their stuck situation and made their pivot to achieve their success. So join me every week as we pivot and go. I'm dreaming vivid, so I'm living my goals. Written to existence, you know I'm doing the most. I'm steady winning, having breakfast for dinner, cause I'm always giving a toast. I live that 1% of lifestyle, didn't you know? Doing what I can just to get in the zone. Incremental change to help you get in the flow. But if you hit the wall, gotta pivot and go. Switch your perspective and go for the goal. It ain't the end of the road, just pivot and go. Just pivot and go. Welcome back to the Pivot and Go podcast. I hope you're all having a great week. We're in for a treat today. We have BJ Armstrong on the podcast. Now, BJ Armstrong is famed of being one of the best point guards in NBA history with the Michael Jordan Bulls, where they three peated and just being one of the best overall leaders on the floor. But BJ is so much more. As you'll find out from this podcast, he's a very deep thinker, outside the box thinker, and he brings a lot of mindsets that we can apply to our lives daily. Even has an answer about Michael Jordan that will blow your mind. I did not see that one coming. You'll want to listen to find that one out. You are in for an absolute treat here with BJ Armstrong, the NBA point guard phenom, the agent to NBA players, the entrepreneur, the podcast host, and so much more. So buckle up because here we go. Pivot and go. BJ Armstrong, welcome to the Pivot and Go podcast. Man, thank you very much for joining this, BJ. Oh, man, you know what? It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here with you. Man. Thanks for inviting me. I've been hearing so much about this, and uh, congratulations, man. I've been hearing wonderful things, and uh, appreciate you having me on. Thanks, BJ. You, we, we've been friends for a while. You're one of the few people that always, always bring a smile to my face. Just the way that you show up with your consistency, brother. People will be able to see this on the, the video version of it. Look at BJ's infectious smile. BJ, start us off with a bang. Something that maybe not everybody knows about you. Not necessarily basketball related, but something Something different. Something that no one knows about me. No one. Um, yeah. Tough question. It's interesting. That's an interesting question. What, what, what am I finding out? Um, as I get older, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love <laughs> Star Wars probably more as an adult as I did as a kid. I'm really getting into the Marvel comics now as an adult. I love all of the WandaVisions and the, mm -hmm. I'm watching the Falcon and the with Winter Soldier, all of the Iron Man and Thor movies. But most people probably don't know, I'm a huge Star Wars person. Like I, I, I love all of the, I guess, out of this world stuff, right? You know, I just, uh, I, I really get into it. The storytelling behind it to me, I find fascinating. And uh, the character building, storytelling and uh i'm just i'm just into all of the the characters especially star wars so I, i'm you know the clone wars i, I <laughs> think awesome. i spent a large part of my life now watching you know hey it's not science fiction it's i don't know what do you want to call it you know a space odyssey <laughs> i don't know what you want to call these things yeah but uh that's i don't think most people know that but i i follow it i'm intense with it too i, I really follow it Disney's Plus, that's the only channel I watch now. Mm. They catch me probably more before the uh, NBA games. Don't tell anyone that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm all over. I can't wait to the the new, is it Loki, I think is coming yep. out. So yep. I, I'm into all of the characters on Disney Plus now. BJ, I, I love that. Respect that so much. I'm the same way. And hey, as being a father, like that works out well for you. You can watch it with your kids, so... Yeah, it would it would work out great if my kids were into it, right? They're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, dad, you know, like, you know, but I'm a easy I'm easy to buy gifts for for like you know Father's Day, holidays, birthdays because they just buy me a a a lightsaber and I'm, I'm good. <laughs> just buy me a lightsaber and I'm good. They like, oh, what are you gonna get your dad? Oh, I'm getting a lightsaber. They're like, no, your dad, not your kids. And they're like, no, my dad. He just wants all the lightsabers, so I collect all the lightsabers. You know. I don't, 
I collect all of the stuff. So that's kind of uh, my kids are like, oh, I don't get it. I don't get what dad is. My dad is always watching those movies and I watch them over and over and over again. So uh, I, it's it's good stuff for me. Good therapy. BJ, when you go all in, you go all in. So I'm all, I'm, well, I'm I'm all all in. I love it, man. Disney Plus. I love it. You know, I'm all in, in on that. I'm, I'm all in on anything on Disney Plus. So uh, it, it's been a good fit, good match for me. Hey, so if if you could pick to be one superhero, who would you be? Who's your favorite go to? <sighs> uh, we're bringing the tough questions from the start. Nothing basketball related at all. Well, the thing that makes a superhero right is it, it, I, I love the. The, the storytelling of the of the hero, right? So, you know, you take, you know, you take, uh, you know, I don't know, you take Thor, or you take the Black Panther, or you take Captain America, you take, okay, so the storytelling is, to me, is what makes it fascinating. Yeah. Um, the reason I love Star Wars is because they always take you from the beginning to the end, right? And they always start off, they, they're just regular people like myself they don't know that they have these powers but they evolve out of necessity right and you wow. get a chance to peek behind so i the storytelling to me i find more fascinating mm-hmm. than the, the powers like you know like yeah dark vader okay the whole his his story arc to me is way more fascinating than watching the lightsaber duel right you know obi-wan kenobi like, you know, all of these characters, you know, Iron Man, like, okay, I, I wanted to know him before he got all the superpowers and he can do the Spider-Man people, you know, the Hulk, you know, I like, I, I you know, the Ant-Man. I, I, I love the storytelling. So the fascination of people discovering themselves, I connect with that, right? Because it's kind of like, you know, as a as an athlete, right? You weren't always that good. You had to... How did you evolve to get there? You know, how, how did you, you know, how did Kareem Abdul-Jabbar discover one day that he had a sky hook, a shot that no one could block? Like, how do you get to that? So to me, the, the storytelling, the story arc, the transformation of these people going from, you know, just regular people into getting to those powers to me is it's fascinating. I'm, I probably in a previous life, I was a director or something. I just love the storytelling. <laughs> I, I really do. I, yeah. I just, I find it fascinating. Like the movies, the, 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 the theatrics of it doesn't, it doesn't really appeal, but the storytelling, when I see great storytelling, I don't care what genre it is. It just fascinates me. So, um, you know, that's why I think, you know, when I, I was able to meet George Lucas and wow. I was just fascinated with his, you know, he had like this, you know, he just like he got people, you know, it's like playing on everybody. Say, oh, man, you played on great teams. What I find more fascinating is just the people. Right. You meet people, you hear their stories, you hear their their journey. So um, kind of the same thing when I'm watching a movie and it doesn't really matter. I just like I like great stories. I like hearing people's stories of, you know, what they did and how they got to where they where they are, or where they're going. That's the deepest Star Wars answer I've ever heard. I love it, BJ. And you know what's funny is because you talk about before they were actually the Star Wars people, before they were superheroes. I remember when we were doing pre-draft for for Wasserman, for the guys coming into the draft, you were telling me, like, what if we could have had D. Rose film or Russell Westbrook film, all this film before they were actually the guy that they were? Like, that's it to a core, that storytelling. Well, you know... That's probably why I, 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 I love it more probably than any other part of, you know, working in the NBA and all the different facets that I've done. I, I love the I love the rookies, mm-hmm. you know, more than anything, because you get a chance to see who they could be and the optimism that the players have in pre-draft, like you just mentioned they have before they play their first game. There's so much optimism in the air and holding on to that optimism is a huge gift. And it's a little secret that not many players get a chance to hold on to because it gets so easily stripped, right? We all get skewed by our our everyday life or, well, you know, I've 
played and won so many games that you just think it becomes like common. But if you can hold on to that, you know, how you felt as a rookie, or you can hold on to the the optimism that's in the air of like remembering what it was like to go through a pre-draft experience. The longer you can hold on to that, you know, it just it's, it's a special thing. So um, I try to hold on to my my I don't know my naivete, my innocence for as long as I could uh, when I came into the league because I always wanted to have that experience of that wow experience when I first walked in the door. So uh, it's just a little secret that I think all the players who have an opportunity to have a career in this league learn that, you know what, you can't let anyone destroy your happiness. You can't let anything Mm. get in the way of your, you know, wherever's your happy space, you know, that's your space. You carve it out, you hold on to it for as long as you can. And if you're fortunate enough, you can play this game for a long time and it could, you know, it could be a very, rewarding experience in a lot of different ways right not just financially but spiritually emotionally the friends you make you know i'm sitting here talking to you watching you with your podcast and i never would have thought you know whatever 10 15 years ago when we first met that i would be sitting here doing this but you see the growth in people and um so it's 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 been a great experience for me that's really cool man and that i feel like that is the secret sauce to why you're so successful on court now off court as an agent and now in all your entrepreneurial ventures that you have is because you care about people. You want to get to know people. It's not a transactional thing for you. Like you're one of the very few people in the in the basketball agent world that you always reached out to me, checked in on me, saw how I was doing. Like you yeah, genuinely yeah. care about people. Well, you know, as you get older, you know, I, you're not as old as me, right? I'm old, right? Gray hair and I'm old. I've been around now. <laughs> And still look young, BJ. You still yeah, look you like know, you could you, go. You get to a point where you get small talked out, you know? Yeah, And I didn't true. understand that true. 15 years ago, right? You're small talked out, right? You know, let's cut all the small talk. Hey, how you doing, David? How, how's your family? How are the kids? Yeah. How are this? Yeah. You, you, yeah. And you're just doing this because you are trying to get to where you're trying to get to. So what I learned is, you know... You know, if you don't put nothing in the bank, you can't get nothing out. So I just feel like I'm always making deposits. Yeah. Just nice. check in. Let me check nice. in on Dave. I don't need anything. Let me just check in on you. Yep. Deposits. So man. it means something, right? Totally. If I check in with totally. you once and it mean it, that's more important than me checking in five times because I need something. Dave, I need this. Dave, I need that. Dave, I need this. So I just learned. The one thing that people appreciate is when you're authentic, right? And I just try to do it with integrity. Hey, I'm checking in, David, because I care about him. I'm not checking in because I need anything. I want anything. Hey, just, hey, how yeah. you doing? Yeah. And that so means bad. something. That means something yeah. to me, right? Because I need truth tellers in my life. Mm. And I would hope if you if you saw or you see me doing something that you felt that could help me, that you feel comfortable enough to say, hey, BJ, you're my guy, but <laughs> da, 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 da. So um, surrounding myself with people like you, I, I, I value your friendship more than anything. Mm-hmm. I value, you know, who you are and, and, and the, the, the stories and you sharing your life with me and vice versa. So that means something. And I don't take that for granted. So. Um, I just try to find my happy space, treat people like I want to be treated. And uh, hopefully when I get old and I'm 70 years old, you'll check on me. You'll be like, hey, <laughs> BJ, how you doing? I may need something then. I don't need anything now, but I may need BJ, something then. Man, so. You'll still be running yeah. circles around me then. <laughs> but. David and go. Oh, oh, you know that feeling you get when you just wake up and you are not rested or recharged? Yeah, we all have it. We all go through it. How do I wake up with full energy every single day? It is literally the game changer itself, chilly sleep. I have an Uller that goes underneath my mattress and cools my body temperature to the ideal temperature to get deep sleep, REM, high HRV scores. Now I have mine pretty cold at about 57 degrees. The optimal level is between 57 and 65 degrees. I have a weighted blanket, which just cools my body I'm just sleeping in restorative sleep. So when I wake up in the morning, no matter how many hours I get, 
I am juiced up and ready to go. And lucky for you, you can wake up the same way. The people at Chili Sleep are giving you a discount, giving you a code. So go to chilitechnology.com forward slash pages forward slash David Nurse to get your special discount pricing there. Remember, that is chilitechnology.com forward slash pages forward slash David Nurse. Or just click the link below and it'll take you right there. It's sleep like a polar bear tonight. Get the best night's sleep of your life. Chilly sleep. Every morning when I wake up, the first thing I put into my body is element. Rehydration. It's so important right when you wake up to get your brain going, everything in your body flowing with the correct hydration. Not sugar, not these things you'll be seeing in these sports commercials, but element. Backed by science and a lot of salt, magnesium, potassium, sodium, it has all the elements to give you the perfect hydration that you need to attack your day. I drink one in the morning, and I also drink it during my workout to give me that extra energy boost. And I'm not feeling any of the crashes from sugar. I've got the salt, and I've got element. Check out the link below and in the show notes to get your code, your discount, your super special pricing on element, and rehydrate your life. Pivot and go. Hey, you hit on a great point, though. It is the people that we surround ourselves with. We need truth tellers in our lives, not just yes men. And that separates the good from the great. And you've experienced the great. In my audience, the listeners would be remiss if we didn't talk about the last dance and talk about Jordan and talk sure, about sure. playing with the Bulls and the three-peat that you had with the Bulls. What was... What was first off what was your secret sauce i feel like you're just the ultimate competitor it's not being that tall probably overlooked um, a lot what was your secret sauce bj yeah you know that was it was a it was a great time because as a young kid i i, I had a dream right and i dreamed of like so many young people right you know men and women boys and girls and if i could just have that opportunity to play in the nba that was my dream that was my dream as a young kid from as long as i can remember and really i just carried that dream Mm -hmm. and there wasn't anyone that was going to get in my way and i just remember no matter how many times i was going to fall down i was going to always get back up so if you say what was my secret resiliency I i was just a very persistent kid yep Right. I wasn't the strongest. I wasn't the fastest. I would love to tell you I had a secret drill that helped me (laughs) shoot. Well, I wish I could tell you I had a secret move. I was going to make this work. That's that's as simple as that. Yeah. And it's fascinating now to watch the game because the popularity of the game, every you know, everyone is plays now and it's a global game and you know, you have coaches, coaches like yourself. And when I walk into a gym, I walk into a gym and I see all these people, you know, doing moves and taking shots and everyone's getting coached. My formula was simple. Like, I was going to find a way. That's it. That is the secret I, sauce. I, yes. I, I, I didn't need a coach. Yeah. I didn't need this, you know, and, and it's not that. I don't value coaching. I do value coaching. I mean, I've had the wonderful opportunity to play for Hall of Fame coaches. But the one thing that I value more than anything, and I I learned this from my dad, was my dad, when I was little, my dad wouldn't let me play organized sports. And I couldn't understand it then. and, and, And it's taken me to have kids myself to figure it out of why he didn't do that. He said, you know, son, I want you to know who you are before anyone else starts telling you who you are or who you should be. Mm. So why don't you figure that out first? And then when you figure that out, I'll let you play organized sports. Not because I don't want you to play with the other kids. It's just because you, before you can get coached, you should already know who you are. So I didn't play organized sports, Dave, until I was in high school to like, Ninth, ninth grade. So my dad would encourage me to go to the playground, figure out what's your game, what can you do, <laughs> call your own files. And while the other kids were playing organized sports, my dad would just say, "Go to the playground and play. Figure it out." That's awesome. 
Just go go figure it out. <clears throat> Call you. Understand what moves you got. Understand, you know, if you lose on this court, you might not get back on to, you know, two hours later. So, you know, I, I wanted to play like all my friends. All my friends were playing, but my dad was like, because once somebody starts telling you what to do and who you are and you don't know, it can confuse you. Totally. So that's how I grew up. That's how I played. I, and I played. And then once I got to high school, you know, I, I kind of had some idea. I didn't know who I was or who I was going to become, but I had an idea of what I could do because, you know, I just played in the streets. I just played in the playground. I, I literally, you know, my dad would come back. He said, how many games you win today? You know, did you hold the court down? And those were my lessons. So my lessons were all in the city of Detroit playing wherever I could play. And when I got to organize basketball, um, there was a sense of urgency because I knew if I lost at the park, there was a pretty good chance I probably wouldn't get a chance to get back on because there was always people on the sideline waiting to get back on, right? Yep. So once I was on that court, that game to 11, I, I valued that game because everybody was depending on me. I like I was depending on them and you wanted to pick the best team so you could hold the court. So uh, playing in a game was the easy part. because <laughs> True. It didn't have the same True. feel like, right. man, man, if you lost <laughs> on the, if you lost at the playground, you probably wouldn't get back on. Like I've been waiting here for an hour to get on and then I lost 11 to 2. Man, why did I choose these people, right? And vice versa. So I wanted to hold up my end of the deal. I wanted people to like respect my game, but more importantly, I wanted they I wanted people in my neighborhood and wherever I played to be like, "Oh man, this kid can play, you know, and and, and hold the court." So uh, that's how I learned how to play. That's how I learned Everything I learned, and then once I got to organize basketball, I felt comfortable or confident about what I could and couldn't do, and I, I had value for winning. Like I didn't mm. know about step backs, I didn't know about in and outs, <laughs> I didn't know about crossover. I mean, I had seen the moves, but what I did know is that winning was the most important part of why I was out there. That I knew. I figured that out. And then from there, I was lucky enough to have good coaches, good mentors, people I met along the way who who refined those skills that I already had. But it was um, it's been interesting to watch. You know, I, I feel like I'm continuing to evolve, even though I don't play. I just continue to learn about people. I learn about the game. And more importantly, I learn about how to value winning, because winning to me is why you play the game. Totally. That's what makes it fun, too. People try to shy away from winning like everybody should win. No, have competition and win. And man, what you hit on there in that formula was amazing. Hard work is a skill. Hard work is a skill that nobody works on, but that is the driving force. Yeah. Um, you know, we all have our terminology, right? We all have our terminology of, you know, working hard and whatever. And I think what we're saying is the same thing is. You know, when I when I think of working hard, right, I, I just think of just give me your best. Yep. If that's your best, I, I accept that. Totally. And you know everyone has their different, you know, you, you, you may shoot the ball with a different, you know formula than me you may have a different approach to the game your terminology may be different but it took me a long time to get to become a professional and to say this like all right i'm going to give my best mm. so you know working hard in high school what does that really mean for me um you know, I say this humbly. I, I, I was, I had better talent than most in high school. Yeah, totally. So, 
and then when I saw other players who were better than me, they had better talent. So what was going to allow me to play, right? So, you know, yeah, you can work hard, but sometimes you can work hard, but I don't care how hard I work. I, <laughs> I, I didn't have better talent than Scottie Pippen. Or, you know what yeah, I mean? I, yeah, never, yeah, yeah. I never was. So I learned that, you know, hard work is hard work. And that's what it is. Like, if you're a better athlete, you you should be able to work at a more efficient rate than I can. Just because yeah. you're a better athlete. That doesn't mean you're outworking me. So I, I, I picked up very early on that I had to walk into my fear. And my fear was I did my best. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can't be a professional athlete in any sport and be afraid not to do your best. Because if you do your best you will you will begin to focus on well what's your solution why did you lose the last game why well, i got to work harder and i learned very quickly that working harder isn't the solution if you're going to be a professional great answer great answer working that's not my solution i'm a pro i, I if you're a professional then i can make adjustments that's going to give me the greatest opportunity to achieve success. And success ultimately means winning the game. So working hard can't, can't be my solution. Now, I hear a lot of people say, well, uh, you lost the game, we gotta work harder. <laughs> I yeah. missed some shots, I gotta work harder. <laughs> BJ, that's an okay. awesome point. Yeah. It is almost- Yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. And I just say, I just say this real quick and-, and yeah. I, I learned that some of these, you know, people and players and athletes I was playing against, they were incredibly gifted, talented players. But I was okay with the result as long as I knew I gave my best. And that allowed me to play the game and see the game and to compete because I really wasn't interested in winning and losing. I preferred to win, but knowing that I did my best was far superior to me than saying I got to work harder because if I got to work harder, then I was playing the game with some type of fear. What kept me from giving my very best? You know, tonight, David beat me. I can live with that. Totally. What I can't live with is no, I only gave 80% and be like, you know what? But tomorrow I'm gonna work harder because today to, <laughs> see that go. to me exactly. doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. That 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 doesn't even enter David beat me that day. But the great thing about the NBA is I got 82 games. There's tomorrow. And after watching after watching the game Gonzaga, Gonzaga beat uh UCLA. Mm-hmm. My, my my immediate reaction was after that game, you know, the kid Suggs hits hits that hits that shot, right? He hits the half court shot. Was it's going to be hard for an amateur to get ready in 24 hours to play another game because they're going to be on some emotional roller coaster of like we won, we hit a last second shot, we're gonna you know wow da da da. As a professional, you're like, yay, we won next game. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying if they would have taken that approach, yeah. they would have won that game because Baylor was outstanding on Monday. But you can see the importance of being a professional when you say, today, I got to be my, I got to do my best today. Because my best today may not be my best tomorrow night because of the circumstances, right? I, I wanted to hit every shot, but I couldn't make every shot. So, and I bring that up is because that's what I learned very early. And it allowed me to just like live with the results. Some of these guys are just incredible players. Like, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. Like, <laughs> I can't win every game. He's good. I want to win every game. Trying to win every game to me is way more valuable than winning every game. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I I just lived with I lived with the results and that was that was good for me. I still feel good about that, knowing that hey, today I'm gonna do my best. Now maybe I might not have 
you know, maybe most days I can make nine out of 10, but today I only shot eight out of 10. I can live with that. What I can't live with is that, oh man, I was scared to make 10 out of 10. I was nervous to make mm. nine out of 10. I got to work harder on my game. No, <laughs> no, 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 just give me your best. That's your best today? Okay, Dave, let's go play. So it's a very freeing mindset to have, too. You don't have to oh, feel man. the weight well, of it, regret it, it, on you. I like that. Yeah, it was not only freeing, it's just that's what it is. Like, it is. yeah. If you just like, I, I just, I, I just say, okay, this is what I got today. I'm gonna give you what I got today. How about that? Yep. I'm gonna give you what I got today. Perfect. I love it. I can't. I know I can't be at a thousand percent every single day. Now, there's some days in there I might, you know, I might get that. <laughs> exactly. But I'm gonna give you what I got today, and then figure out how to win with what I got today. That to me is a professional. Beautiful. So well said. That's a pro. You just figure it out. You figure hey, it out. Four yep. games in five nights. Yep. Figure it out. Figure that out. You just <laughs> figure it out. See, okay, that to me is what training is all about. That's why when I go to a gym, I'd be like, oh man, that guy looks great today. But let me see what he looked like on, on Saturday and see what he got. And most of the kids. Oh man, my, my leg don't feel good or my, my, my knee hurt or whatever the case may be when you're young. When you're a pro, you like, okay, my leg don't feel good. My calf is a little tight. So let me adjust my game accordingly to work with what I'm working with today. That's a pro. That's a pro. See that that that's that's a pro. You when you a pro, you just okay. All right, my shoulder's a little off today, but I'll figure it out. And um so that's just just a mindset that I learned along along my path and along my journey. Speaking of mindsets, I love that, BJ. I'm going to throw you on the rapid fire hot seat as we wind down right here. here. So this can be quick answers. Whatever comes to your mind, let it go. So speaking of mindset, do you have a favorite mindset quote or some kind of mantra that you live by? I like to figure it out. You can use that. You have one that might be on your fridge, your bathroom mirror. Um, I, I do not, you know, when I was younger, I, I, you know, I was around some great people. Right. And, um, and, you know, I, 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 I had a coach really challenge me and I've had some great mentors along the way. And, and one of these coaches, he asked me, he said, BJ, what's one plus one. And of course, you know, it's two. And he said, if you ever want to be successful, you got to understand that one plus one equals three. Mm. Go in the extra. Is that he what you're saying? You know, well, life is going to tell you and give you, you know, this is what you should do. This is how you should play. This is, you know, you know, in basketball, because we're talking basketball here, this is here are the fundamentals of the game. But he was like, you can't underestimate people. He said, I can't tell you what's going to happen in this game out here. So you have to take into account that when that game calls on you to do whatever is necessary to do it in that moment, that you will do it. And you got to have the, and you have to have the confidence mm. that you will do it without thinking. He said, "That's how I got to three, because nice. there's no fundamentals. Nice. I can't tell you from the <laughs> sidelines how to do it. I can't tell you when it's gonna happen. But when it happens, <laughs> you better be ready. Yep. And I never forgot that." And I, and I and I and I and I carry that with me now. So I said, look, I want everything in my life to go A, B, C, D. <laughs> I want everything to just go smooth. But I know, David, that it's not going to go smooth. Nope. There's going to be a little turbulence. Things happen unexpectedly all the time. And it's my job to be ready. So when that does happen, I just have to be ready. So I'm always reminded of one plus one equals three. 
So when it does happen, when life throws you that curveball, I was prepared for it, even though I didn't know when it was coming. But you were ready. I was ready for it, you know? And um, and I asked him, I said, well, what's the secret? He said, you got to be a great listener. So I try to listen way more than I talk. I know I'm talking here, but I try to <laughs> listen so that I can absorb yeah. more than because people are always teaching. So I can't learn while I'm talking. So I try to be a great listener. I work on my listening so that I can, you know, be prepared, whatever life is going to throw at me. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I just want to be prepared for it because that's, you know, I, you don't get to be successful without being able to adjust, adjust very quickly and really do things on the fly because um, we'd all love to have our our nice, neat package structure, but it doesn't always happen that way. Man, BG, you have so many good mindsets. Like everybody oh, needs to man, listen to I this. I wish I did. I, I you just, do. I, I've made so many mistakes, David, that I can tell you, you learn. I've learned from them. You learn. Yeah. You learn from your mistakes. BJ, what does leaving a legacy mean to you? Not necessarily what the world says it is, but what would BJ Armstrong leaving a legacy like? Um, leaving a legacy to me is, is, is being an example of what young people can do to learn, take whatever, yeah. you know, has been done and do it better. Yeah. So my, my, my goal is to always leave something better than I found it. It's perfect. It's a great legacy so, to leave. It's not about me. Like the last thing I want is, you know, when I hear, oh, this guy's the greatest player of the game. It, it, it's like, really? Do you I mean, <laughs> really like, okay, you must have not seen a lot of basketball or you haven't seen because, <laughs> you know, if that's the greatest one. Just say that's the only one you've seen. Um, you know, it's, it's been so many amazing people that have participated in life, right? Like, you know, but basketball, um, you want to leave the game better. You know, it's like the great players, they touched the game and the game was better mm. because of it. The great people in this world that's ever walked on this planet have made the world better because of it and so to me that's the legacy like it's not about me it's not about my name it's not about you know how many points you scored or who's in the hall of fame what did you do for the game what did you do for humanity what did you do that made people around you better because the young people you know, they don't have what we have and you get older. They don't have the experience. So they're trying to learn and figure out who they are. And that's where I was lucky. I had excellent mentors. I had ex excellent examples of what not to do, to be honest with you. And yeah. so that to me is the legacy is like, all right, my kids can say whatever. But all I want them to say is that, you know, hey, their father, their mother, tried to make it better for them and hopefully they had an example that they can say and and keep and pass that on pass it on for the next generation that is a legacy and speaking of the greatest of all time what is something that you learned from jordan that most people wouldn't wouldn't know i mean yes he was great leader he was tough he was gritty but what's something that you um, took from him that most people wouldn't well it's, it's fascinating to hear people talk about michael over the years right and because we all have our fantasy of what that is yeah right and you know people say what's it like playing with jordan right i have no idea because i didn't know he was jordan at that time <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know that perhaps one day that he would go on to be considered the greatest player of all time. I had no idea when I first met him that that was the case. Did I know he was really good? I could see that. Did I know he would achieve what, you know, as a team, as a team member, 
individually die? No, like, no, I had no idea, right? What do most people not know about him? He had an incredible amount of self-awareness. Nice. Okay, so everyone talks about tongue wagging and 30 some points and his competitive thing and like, no, like what he did was he, he was self-aware. He was self-aware and he had incredible, his, his game and his life was organized enough to where he understood what his value was to the team. Okay, what's the, what is, why do you, okay, if someone has like incredible talent and that talent just goes out and scores 30 some points a night, what's the point of having the talent if the talent doesn't have a purpose? Great point. Okay, you got 30 a night. And then it's easy for me to say, oh, he's, he's, he or she is doing it by herself. She needs help. He needs help. Okay. That sounds good. Because we can argue, well, if you're getting 30 points and if they get some help, logically, that makes sense. One plus one equals two. Excellence understand that one plus one equals three because you have to factor in the human element and the human dynamic and the human dynamic is what is the responsibility of this great talent i don't need that great talent to play i need that great talent to win it if michael jordan just came out and played he could average back then with hand checking it he could have averaged 40 some points a night he could have but he figured out his value was to win. Spot on. That was his value. Spot on. And he did it better than anyone else. He he he, he had the self awareness to say, okay, I done did all of the other stuff, you know. But he I averaged thirty five points. I've averaged thirty seven. I think one night he averaged thirty seven tonight. He won all the awards. He somewhere along the line he figured out. My true value is to finish. So we teach people how to start things, okay? We teach you how to start a workout. We teach you how to start a game. We teach you how to, but who's, who's teaching these kids? Who teaches you in life how to finish it? He was just, he just learned how to finish. He could finish. Yeah. When he got to the last four minutes of a game, it wasn't a second guessing on whether or not he was going to make the shot. It wasn't a second guessing on whether or not he was going to take the shot. The well, only thing I was second guessing was, did you have the courage to do what I knew that guy in that jersey 23 was going to do? Because it was no doubt in our minds what he was going to do. And not only was it doubt, he was going to carry that and shoulder that responsibility of the outcome. And be ready the next day if he missed it. So when I watch him then and I watch these kids today, I'm not look, it's impressive when someone makes a last second shot, right? That's you know, we've all been out and done that. I was more impressed with watching him miss a shot and watching him deal with that. Because he thrived in it. Everybody can't stand in that kitchen. And I get it. I get it. I get how difficult it is to fail, but he thrived. He loved it. He loved it. Like he didn't blink twice. <laughs> he would miss a shot and he was going to be the same person. If he missed it, he's going to be the same person. If he made it and you didn't know which one you didn't know how he really felt internally. You knew he wanted to make the shot, but when he missed it, he was still going to come on the bus and joke. He still was going to be himself. But more importantly, he had this unwavering confidence to step up to the plate every single time. And that, to me, is the most remarkable thing. So he had this huge self-awareness that not many people have. Everyone talks about being good and everyone talks about being great and I'm going to work hard and I'm going to do whatever the coach says. Okay, those things sound great. 
but do you have the confidence to fail? Do you have the confidence to fail? I know how it is after you make the shot. Okay. I, I know how happy you can be after you win. Do you actually have the confidence to lose and fail and be the same person? Not many do that. So, you know, that's something that I know about him that you know, it yeah. takes time to develop something like that. Like, how many people are comfortable failing? Hey, everybody wants to talk about his six championships. Okay, but... All right. He would tell you if you, if you beat him in a game, any game, he would always tell you he ran out of time. <laughs> so you talk about ideas to him. He never he's never lost. He's never going to lose. He's never going to admit losing. So that allows him to play a different game than you because you're counting the score of that game he's competing during the game right if you ask him the score of a game at any moment during that game whether he down two in the last minute of a game or up 20 in the first quarter he would always say the score is zero zero wow people don't understand when he says he's addicted to competition if the score is always zero zero it really doesn't matter what the score is that's what I knew about him. BJ, that is the best Michael Jordan answer that I have ever heard. Yeah, yeah. I, well, you, you know, it's just it's a good question. You know, you ask good questions, you know, you get the, you know, you get the answers. So, you know, people ask about him all the time. But listen, to him, there's really no such thing as winning and losing. Yeah. That's a different mindset. That's when I had to like, oh, wow. Okay. if, if It's like. You know, it, it reminded me of when my why my dad told me to go play on the playground. Because what's the first thing you do when you lose on the playground? You say what? If you lose, you go run it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the playground, you say run it back. You don't crown somebody to champion. Okay, like, hey, run it back. <laughs> and you had to take on the newcomers. So he found his happy place, and he never let it go. It was because of his mindset. Like you were counting how many points he scored. You were counting the championships he won. You were counting how many games they won. If you asked him right now, <laughs> what's the score? He would say it's zero zero because he's looking for the next. He's looking for the next game. He's looking for the next competitor. He's looking for the next person that's going to step up and say, "I challenge you." That's. That was a different mindset for me that I had never seen. Even though I was exposed to it, 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 I didn't understand it because on the playgrounds, I saw it every day. But it took someone like him to come along to say, oh, That's what it means. oh, this guy has a different way of thinking about the game. It's a totally different the way he viewed the game, the way he prepared for the game. So when you're preparing for the score to 0-0, zero, zero, the only way you're going to lose is not get up. Well, let me tell you something about him. He's going to get up. There's no, it, it, <laughs> he's going to get up. <laughs> you could knock yeah. him down, yeah. but he's going to get up. Wow. That person, you got to be prepared and have the same mindset. And not many had that. BJ, that is a drop the mic answer. You need to be a motivational speaker, man. You've man, got me I fired wish I could up. Motivate, but oh, I, I just, you do. I, 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 I'm learning, man. I'm learning. <laughs> Always learning. Appreciate I love you. it. BJ, how can we all follow you, support you, just listen to everything you're doing? Hey, you know what? Um, I'm just trying to get to this social media. I'm old, right? I'm, thank goodness we didn't have social media. On yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter. Um, that's about the only place I'm I'm at, yep. right? You catch me on Twitter. I do a little television work here and there. You, you might see me on radio. You might see me anywhere. But yeah, listen, you know, um, you know, at BJ Armstrong, I think uh, on Twitter what about the uh, podcast. The podcast. Yeah, we got the podcast. Uh, Pushing through podcast. You can catch me on there a couple times a week. Um, so yeah, you know, just wherever you, wherever you, you know, you're at, you might show up anywhere, you know, like if you see me on the street, man, just say <laughs> hello, you know what I mean? Like 
That's what it's all about. Yeah, so, and you mean uh, that I'm, too, man. You mean that. Yeah, like I, I'm just listen. You always got something to learn from somebody. You always have something to learn, and uh, so yeah, you catch me in real life. You don't have to catch me on the social media. <laughs> yeah. Catch me in real life. You see me, just say hello. You know what I mean. That's, you never know that hello means a lot to me. So. Uh, I hey. appreciate it. Hey, you're the man, VJ. Thank you so much for your time coming on here. I could go all day with you. Oh, man, appreciate we you. We went no deep, VJ. No small no, talk man, about deep, this, man. baby. It's just like, you know, you just, yeah, you know, just, just sharing stories. That's it. We're just sharing stories. Beautiful. VJ, thank you so much, my man. Appreciate it. Pivot and go.